Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome to another video. Yes, so today we're gonna have Blanken style ribbons. Now, when I ordered these from the store, they say short ribs, but yeah, I never cook flanking ribs, but I'm sure I can make it work. And, but as of now, I'm going to try this here marinade. I never had brown sugar marinated steak. I've always said I was going to give it a try. So that's what I'm going to. Hey guys, unfortunately, I don't know what happened to me recording, um, seasoning the flank steak, but I don't have that footage, so. But here is the flank steak. I put it in a plastic bag. I flattened them out so they can marinate in the refrigerator for two hours. So what I seasoned it with, um, I had a pack of, um, brown sugar marinade, flaming brown sugar marinade from McCormick. I put garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper. This is my addition to it. Garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, sea salt. Um, I had some red flaming um, seeds with garlic, like red pepper seeds with garlic in it. Um, I used uh, apple cider vinegar, water, oil, and the packs of the seasoning. And uh, did I mention I had a black pepper and salt? Right, yeah. And um, I think that's that's it. That's it. So I'm sorry, guys, that I lost that part of the footage. I will put um, the measurements and everything down in the description for you. But I'm going to put this. I laid it flat again. Like I said, I laid it flat so the marinade can get and I opened up the steaks so they can lay flat. So the marinade can get, you know, if they fold it, some parts going to get marinated. So I'm going to sit this in the refrigerator for two hours. So we're definitely going to get to our bread pudding today. I've been putting it off and putting it off. So here we have our sale stale bread. I dried it up in the oven. This um, is not regular bread. I got this bread, loaf of bread, from... A food bank it was a pretty loaf of bread and i forgot the name of it guys i'm so sorry but um it was so beautiful and fresh when i got it and i was like wow this would be great for some bread pudding so it's all cut up now and nice and hard still ready to go for some bread pudding here we have our four eggs which have to be beaten when it's time to um, put it together and we have our two tablespoons of butter uh we have our vanilla extract I got one and a half uh, teaspoons, um, three-fourth cup of sugar, three-fourth cup of golden raisins. I have them in water so they can hydrate, bring some plumpness to it. And here I have a pinch of salt. I have uh, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And a teaspoon of cinnamon. Of course, I have the milk and the heavy cream in the refrigerator. So that's going to stay there because it's really hot. And that's going to stay there until you actually pour it out. So let's get started. I'm, I've been putting this off. And I promise you guys, this is my first time making bread pudding. I told you guys I'm not a baker. But I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. The biscuits didn't turn out bad. I'm going to do them again. Each time I try, it's going to be an improvement. So here we go. Okay, guys. So here we go. <clears throat> we have our pan ready for our bread pudding. I'm going to preheat the oven to 350. I'm going to spray my pan with some Pam Original Easy Clean Up Canola Blend.
We're going to put our breadcrumbs in our pan. When I dry my bread out, guys, I put some fresh basil in here um, to dry it up with. Just for uh, extra oomph. I love basil. Basil can go in desserts as well as savory food. So that's what I did here. We're going to melt our two tablespoons of butter. And pop that in the microwave for five seconds. This is going to take five seconds to melt that butter. Four or ten, maybe. And we're gonna drizzle. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, sorry, guys. Woo! Be careful, guys. We're gonna drizzle our butter over our bread. Take your time. You want to get as much on it as possible. Try to, not a lot of butter, but you want to spread it out evenly as much as you can. I'm going to push that to the side. And in the same bowl, the same bowl we have our eggs we're going to put our eggs in here now the eggs are room temperature you um, may want to open your eggs and crack them into another bowl to make sure you don't get any shells in it but I'm not gonna do that because <laughs> I'm not gonna get any shells in mine <laughs> but if you're not sure if you're gonna get shells in yours just crack them into another bowl So that way you can separate the shells if any drop in. And you can also, at this time, uh, sprinkle your raisins in the bread. So I'm going to sprinkle some raisins. I'm sorry I missed that step. I'm going to save some for the top of the red pudding. Make sure you get them all around evenly and save some for the top. Okay, that's the eggs. We have our adult vanilla. I have my cinnamon, nutmeg, and a little bit of salt. Uh-oh. Been hanging out in the bowl a pretty long time. <laughs> We have our sugar 
And we're gonna add our two cups of milk. I'm using almond milk. You can use whatever kind of milk that you choose to use. But right now I'm using almond milk. I left the milk in the refrigerator to the very last minute, which I should have took it out um, like two minutes ago maybe, but I didn't. But for the future, take your milk out to bring it to room temperature. Yep, let's bring it out early, bring it to room temperature. And we're going to give this a nice whisk. I like to start in the center. And I bring things back into the center. I hope this brisk doesn't sound really, really loud on the other side because I know when I'm watching other people's uh, video, it just sounds so loud when they're using the whisk and all those things. So you can put this in a blender if you would like, if you don't um, have the patience to whisk. I'm going to get my spatula and pull down the cinnamon. I like to just rub on the side, pull down the cinnamon. It's not too much up here, but that's what I like to do. Just gonna use it. Once I start getting it thoroughly uh, whisked up a little bit, I like to tilt my bowl a little. It still has a little ways to go because you can see that all the yolk is not incorporated and you can still see some white separating. So, I'm going to take your time. I don't want to splash out the bowl. That's why I said the blender will work just fine. Just be patient. Don't rush it. That's how you have some good food. You have to have some nice patience. And we're going to Pour our mixture over the egg. Let me pull this mixture. I mean, over the bread, I'm sorry. It looks like I could use a little more bread. I can see the bottom of my pan, but we'll see um, how it expands once I put all the custard on the eggs. Now, you can let this sit overnight. You can let it sit as long as you want to make sure the bread sucks up all the custard. So, I'm gonna let mine sit for a few until I'm just, you know, I have a desired um, texture of the eggs and my other bread soaking up the custard. Stir them in nicely. Make sure you stir it in, get that bread nice and coated as much as you can with the custard.
<clears throat> yeah, stir it all in really good. So what I think I'm going to do, guys, is I have some leftover cornbread. I'm going to crumble the cornbread just for a different flavor. Remember, cooking is like an art. You can be as creative as you want to be. There's no rule for the game. Except some things are, you know, depending on your culture, it's fundamental and the rules just can't be changed. Like I know for Italians, it is a crime to break your pasta in here. I do, know, I do know that much and you have to respect the culture. I do anyway. I respect the culture. <laughs> I rinse my hands off and now I'm going to put some more raisins on top. I don't know why I went for the golden raisins this time, guys. I really don't. I just went for the golden raisins. Not this time. Well, this is my very first time, so I don't know what I mean this time. <laughs> So I'm going to cover this up and I'm going to just let it soak. Soak, soak, soak. Just push it down some. Push it down. I'm going to let it soak uh, maybe uh, maybe 10 minutes on this side and then I'm going to flip it over, I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss it around so the other side can saturate some more. I'm gonna put it in the oven. I'm gonna sit it there. That's out the way. <laughs> so, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take our steak out of the refrigerator. So that can begin to become room temperature. I'm not going to let it flat on the board. I like to preserve the board as much as I can. And also with meat. I'm going to be very careful with cross contamination. Constantly, constantly, constantly uh, wash your hands when you touch your meat. As Gina Young says, uh, impeccably clean your hands. <laughs> impeccably. So, mm, smell the seasoning on that steak. Wow, this has been the marinating way more than two hours, guys. I really had the rest today. And I'm really still not rested, but I feel a little better. So my respiratory acts up. It takes a lot of energy out of me because I'm coughing a lot. So, yeah, so it is eight. P.M. in the evening, but I had to get this food cooked. I couldn't just let it hang out for another night. <laughs> um, for lunch, I threw me together a leftover taco <laughs> from Taco Tuesday. I was so hungry I had to eat something. <laughs> I thought I would have been eating dinner at the time, but <laughs> nope. I have one more taco Tuesday. I'm going to warm up a taco. So 
So we're going to set that aside. Let that get room temperature. So I have two packs. chicken broth or any other broth because I want the flavor from the mushrooms. Natural flavor from the mushrooms. <clears throat> so we're going to turn this on medium heat. And once it start simmering, we uh, get it hot, we turn it down, let it simmer. Now, one pack is 10 minutes. Do you think two packs is 20 minutes? <laughs> we will see. We will see what the broth is getting us. descriptions boxes in my previous videos if I remember I'll put the link in for these knives I got six for eighteen dollars from Amazon so so far so good they're new they're not the sharpest but I tell you I was so embarrassed <clears throat> when I was cutting the bacon one day for my dish I couldn't believe how I was sawing and sawing and sawing and sawing. Uh, yeah, it was embarrassing. So, this is a mighty large onion, so we're gonna. Uh, I say my. Onion pills, guys. This is something new that I'm trying to save my onion pills uh, to make my own vegetable broth. So again, when I get ideas, I'm going to start writing them down so I can give uh, the people the credit for who I got the recipes from. So, I like to slice my onions. Sometimes with the pill on, it makes it easy for me to, you know, I just do it like this sometimes. And just take the pill off afterwards. <laughs> I need more countertop, right? And in the meantime, we're gonna get our pan out for the pierogies. I don't have a big frying pan for the pierogies, but this will hold enough liquid that I need. For the pierogi. I didn't want to put garlic in this because I want the mushroom flavor. But 
I am going to cut me two cloves of garlic for the pierogies. Okay, so this is starting to simmer, so I'm going to turn this down on the simmer, okay? Real low, because we don't want that to cook out or boil. We just want to get a nice boil. See how they're hydrating and getting tender? And I want to get a nice boil out of this. I want to toss it a little bit, so if I, when I drain it, all the particles to get separated from the broth. So I'm gonna make sure I'm getting in between each crevice of the mushroom. They smell delicious. Each crevice of the mushroom. <clears throat> Actually, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold off of this broth to do our pierogies in. Yeah. How about that? Smart move. So I'm not going to put the water in a pot like this for the pierogies. I'm going to take our pierogies out. They're nice and frozen. These are loaded with cheddar cheese, sour cream and chives. I think these should be about done. I don't want them to get too tough. So I am going to take these out. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to pick our mushrooms out. So all the particles It fell off to remain at the bottom. And then I'm going to drain this with, um, I'm going to drain it with a coffee filter. I'm sorry, coffee filter. Be careful, guys. It is hot at the stove. And be very careful. You want to drain your ball. Be careful. If you don't want the filter to fall down into the cup, Okay, so we're going to put our pierogies in um, flat side, the puppy side first. Put them right in the broth. Let them start steaming. I think I have nine pierogies here. <sighs> Okay, we're gonna put it back on a heavy, the bigger pan. I mean, you know, I here. Mm -hmm. See, the broth is running to the four corners of the pan, so that's where I'm going to put the pierogies. Make sure we turn our gas back on the medium, and let them start simmering.
Yeah. We're improvising with the pots, y'all. <laughs> we are improvising with the pots. And so now what I'm going to do is toss our bread. Bring our bread back over. Make sure our bread is nice and saturated. Listen, I already put the raisins in, right? Oh, uh, yeah, we're not gonna worry about that. The raisins will still be left for the top, but we'll see how saturated it is. Spatula. 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 Ooh, nice and stretched with this. No liquid left. Ooh. No liquid left. Look at that. So we're going to turn it around. Because we have some. A little bit bigger. Yes. yes, we do. A little bit at the bottom. So we're going to stir this back up. So the bread on top can soak up the rest. I was a little concerned about it being space in the pan, but the bread did swell. sit for maybe 10 more minutes, 7 or 10 more minutes before we stick that in the oven. I can leave that uncovered. Because I'm going to improvise with this aluminum foil and cover up our so they can steam. <coughs> Let's do light. Light will have a whole some steam in it. So we want to move our hands over out the way into this pan so I can cut up the garlic. texture for you guys uh, but not for me but I am going to take a few pieces out for uh, my neighbor but I do have to let this cook more for me so move some of these over give them out a nice scoop Add him some mushrooms. Once the mushroom cooks him, add the mushrooms in. <clears throat> and a little bit more oil. And I don't want to cover these up. <coughs> <coughs> because I 
because I actually want these to caramelize, not steam. I want these to caramelize, not steam. So, we're putting this cooking, the meat is cooking. Ooh, the barbecue sauce is rendering down. The mushrooms and onions are cooking. Now I have one more thing to do. I had some leftover corn on the cob. Uh, stay still now, don't run from me. Well, there's only two. I'm going to cut them and put them in some milk and, and steam them. Some milk and some butter. We may throw some feta cheese in here. We'll see. We will see. Remember, I still didn't put any salt in this yet. And these mushrooms yet. You have to be very, very careful with mushrooms too, because if they overcook, honey, they get worse. milk <clears throat> and we have herb butter this is uh, from cherry cherry gold herb butter tablespoon and a half. Very little bit of sea salt. And a little bit of cracked black pepper. Cover that with that, and I'm gonna fly digging, digging to the top. Can you guys see? I really wish you could see the mushrooms and the onions. I have to rearrange the camera setting, camera position. Thank you. 
Everything is nice and caramelized. I can go ahead and add a little bit of salt. A little bit go a long way. And I'm gonna add some parsley, please. Just for the looks of it. bigger ones, these are so small. Oh. The corn is cooking, so we're going to turn that down. smell and look delicious. Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna check on our bread pudding. That should be about done. And our meat. Good. I'll just show you guys. Thing. It's so hot in this kitchen. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna base our steak. One thin layer. Let that glaze a little bit. Put another layer on there. Ooh. Our bread pudding looks done. Yep. Oh my goodness. Are you on there? Oh my goodness. Oh my god, did I miss that? Oh. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, so the bread pudding is done. Bread pudding is done. Taking it out. Whew. And I hope y'all didn't miss too much 
I put barbecue sauce on the top, a thin layer of barbecue sauce on the ribs. I'm gonna let that uh, glaze up some. Put another layer on, and then flip it and put another layer on. Sorry about that, guys. It's getting late, and I am tired, and things are not positioned right. Oh, Jesus. So. So here I'm breathing. That's done. We're putting done. I want to get it off my counter. This is not the lid for the pot, but I didn't fly digging for one. I'm going to toss the corn. Yep, I'm going to let that just cook on down. So we have our butter melting for our pierogies. So caramelize our pierogies in this herb butter. Ooh, ooh, hot, hot. Almost there, y'all. I'm doing it right over top of the um, mushroom and iron flavor. Double layers of seasoning. I'm reserve that piece of butter in case I need it. Put it in the thick side first. Lay that down first. Okay, so I have my pierogies nestled on top of the mushrooms and onions with some cream sauce. I'm gonna cover that up and let it simmer. We got our corn still. Add a little bit of feather cheese and our corn. Just to get it a tang. With some parsley. I'm going to let that simmer down. Add this cooking too fast back there. And the lid. This electric stove is going to choke on It cooks so fast. Some more barbecue sauce on it. I put a little bit more milk in there. Not right now, but I'll wait and see. 
I'll turn to everything. Be once everything gets done. And our sour cream that we have for our pierogies. I got some fresh chives. Put some fresh chives on it. Guys, I don't even know if I'm eating tonight. <laughs> I am not hungry. Well, I'm not. Let's see, I'm not hungry. Let's see how the bread put turns out. Nice and moist and hot. I gotta let it cool off. But it's nice and moist and hot. Yep, not dried out. Okay. Remember the secret I told you guys I had? Get the rear pudding. Let me see if I can show it to you. Ugh. Have a little plate. See that peach in there? I put some peaches in it. Ooh yep. I put some peaches in the bread for them. Mm-hmm. I don't want to eat too much because if I eat some food, I get full fast. Mm. Mm-hmm. First time. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. First time. I'm gonna make some sauce for it tomorrow. Mm. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We got corn. Mm -hmm. There's a cheese and um, parsley. Look for all these things off and wait for the meat. Praise the Lord. I'll be right back with you when I plate the food. So, there we have it, guys. We are done. Barbecue beef flanks. Pierogi. Stuffed with potatoes. Cheddar cheese. And chives. With oyster mushrooms and some other onions underneath. Corn on the cob with a milk sauce with feather cheese, parsley, herb, butter, and bread pudding with raisins and peaches. <clears throat> Stay tuned for the plate up. So, what do you guys think? It smells so delicious in here. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord, for this food which I have prepared. Prepared. Bless the hands that prepared it. Bless everyone that's watching. May you keep us safe from harm and danger. In the name of Jesus, amen. mushrooms and onions, sour cream and chives, corn on the cob, parsley, feather and butter, or butter, barbecue flank steaks, 
and we are pudding uh, we are pudding with raisins and peaches The next day, as promised, guys, I'm gonna attempt to make this sauce for the bread pudding. So here we have our one cup of heavy cream. We're going to stir in our flour and sugar. Um, we had, oh, I forgot the measurements. Um, the flour is one tablespoon and the sugar is a half a cup. <clears throat> and stir those in. How's everyone doing? How's everything going with everyone? And here we have a tablespoon of butter. So guys, last night was a, a testimony. I was tired. Oh Lord, how much I was tired, but I had fun. I really enjoyed cooking. I really enjoyed cooking. What I love most is when people enjoy my cooking. My neighbor um, told me today that he really enjoyed the llama beans and rice. So, and he stopped and picked up his. Uh, platter that I had for him. He didn't get his, uh, he didn't get his, um, come on, help me out. We're putting it because I wanted to make sure he gets some sauce. I don't know, like sending incomplete meals off. So, yep. So, I got a little treat for this here. I am going to put some bourbon in here. I'm going to put one eighth. I hope there's not too much, y'all. I've never done it before. I won't see a measurement to say how much to put in there. But that's what I'm going to put in there some bourbon. One eighth. Y'all think that's too much? Let's see. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. Don't even go there. That's not a lot. Well, I turned the gas on, really. One thing about this electric stove, <clears throat> honey, once it gets hot, it gets hot. So, but you don't want to rush it to get hot. Ooh. Excuse me. Because it'll raise the temperature on your food too fast instead of the food gradually getting up to the temperature that it needs. And definitely with the sauce here, just have to gradually get to the texture and temperature that it needs. So it can thicken the little flour things break up in here as I smash some of them. So yeah guys, I'm really pleased with my um, bread pudding. First time making it. But we know, if you can read and follow directions, you can cook. That's all it is. If you can read, follow directions, 
You don't even have to understand measurements that well. You can Google it like I do. You know, sometimes I have to <clears throat> Google the measurements and see how much this is there. Like, say for instance, something say three-fourth cup. Well, if you don't know that, you Google it. How do you get a three-fourth cup? You know, and the first video I saw was to um, get a half a cup and then a one-fourth cup. That's a three-fourth. So, it's very simple. Look at this starting to thicken up. I'm so proud of myself. I'll be so proud of myself when I attempt and do things. And then I'll be disappointed with myself when things don't turn out the way that I want them to turn out. But people still be, enjoy it. You know, so that's that, you know. So I'm going to pour the vanilla in now. Yeah, one teaspoon of vanilla. And just keep stirring it until I get to the texture, the consistency that I want. You stick your spoon in there and you rub your finger with a spoon. Mmm, woo! And I guess it stays separated. So it's done. Yep. It is done, nice and hot. Mmm, mm hmm. Wow, it's good. Yes, that is so delicious. So we're done. Remove up the heat. Oh my goodness, that sauce is good. Oh my goodness, guys, that sauce is good. And talking about um the brandy. The brand. Oh no, took it to a whole nother level guys a whole nother level so we got one little small piece cut i got to taste some more of this a whole nother level A little yellow because of the echo, or whatever the little white. Ooh, ooh, look at that! And you can smell the vanilla in the O M G. Yes, let's take a bite of this plum. It's taking this bread pudding to another level. You know what else? If you had a scoop of vanilla ice cream and pour some cream over the ice cream as if it was chocolate fudge. Mm. And I'm not a dessert person. I like snacks. Give me some chips, some Pringles, or something like that. But honey, I'm getting in trouble in this apartment by myself with all this cake. 
just a little bit. So thanks guys. As I promised last night that I would make some sauce today. And I'd like to be a woman of my word. So thanks for joining me. Until the next time, be extraordinary. God love you and so do Jesus love you and so do I.